Hi, I'm Marius from MWS Photography, and welcome back to another episode of Digital Photography Today, the show where you will learn how to become the master of your camera. Today's topic, we are going to edit our first image, and we will be using Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 for this. Now, 12 has already been released, and if you're using an older version, like 10 or older, you'll find that everything is still the same. They just change it around. So, for instance, if I go to this Move icon here, you'll see the options for the Move icon is located here in the bottom where in 10 and older it was located here at the top which is actually better because this section is much larger than it was here at the top so it takes away some of your screen real estate but other than that it's still the same um, you will just need to look in different areas to find it so if you're using 10 and older look at the top if you're using 11 you'll find it here in the bottom if you're using Photoshop CS it's still going to be the same they just love to change the icons around, making my job hell, because then I have to reshoot the videos. Right, so before we start with the editing process of our first image, um, I just want to first familiarize you a little with the program so you know where everything is. If you want to close this option at the bottom, you can just use that little arrow there. It's going to minimize it. And if you look in this section right here, here you can find a lot of the tools that we are going to be using in this video and in or actually more in future videos we are going to be using more of these tools but if I select a tool for instance this one here's the options for this tool if I use this one here's the options for that tool so here's where you're going to get most of your tools and this is where the options will be you can close it with this little arrow then at the top here you've got like your normal Windows programs, file, edit and stuff like that. So if you go file you can go open to open your image. I'm going to show you a better way to open the image. If you go here to enhance you'll find a lot of the tools we will be using and then also you'll see that there's shortcuts here. So I will show you the shortcuts to get the tools open because it's just going to save you a lot more time. Then I like to have a clean working screen. So on this side of the screen, I only want two specific windows open. And the first one is the navigator, which you will soon see is an awesome tool. And then here yeah, I've got my layers panel. Now the layers we will cover in a future episode, but this is just the way I would like to see my Photoshop. Now, if you do not have it like this, you can see at the top, for instance, yes, you have got navigator. If I go to window, I can turn Navigator off. So now I don't have Navigator anymore. If I go back to Window and I choose Navigator, Navigator will be back. This is also handy if you go to Window and you'll see if I take tools away, we have we don't have any tools anymore. Now sometimes people hide stuff on the screen. They maybe just pressed a button on a keyboard or they clicked on something and it's like where that icons now go. So to fix that, just go back to Window and just go tools and you'll see it's back again so you don't need to close the program and open it back up it'll still be gone you'll have to go to window and then just click on tools and it'll come back right now for us to, f to f open our first image I can go to file open and then I can search for the image and then open it but it's, it takes a lot of time so a shortcut way to open your images will be just to go to your Windows Explorer. Now to do that you can just press the Windows key and the E for Explorer on your keyboard and it will open the Explorer. Now mine is already open on my second screen. So I'm just going to go over to the second screen and I'm just going to drag it in here. So here is my Explorer and you'll see I've got two images I've already put on the desktop that we can use now. Your images might be under My Pictures, it might be in a specific folder. So just navigate to that folder now and then you can see your pictures. Now a very nice tip if you're using Windows 7, I think it also works on Vista, I'm not sure, but on Windows 7, there's this icon right here. If you choose it, you'll see you can change the size of your icons. So for instance, here's extra large icons. So now I can see my pictures better, so I love to have it set to extra large icons. Now there are two ways that I can open the image in elements and the first one is to right click on it go to open with and then just choose elements 11 that's one way of doing it or there's a drag and drop method now I prefer the drag and drop method because I'm using two screens so I can go to the image and just drag it down and you'll see in the bottom here there is elements now you must lift your screen up or not the screen you must lift the icon up so that the icon of the image is here in the middle of the screen otherwise it will not open I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna go back to um, my Explorer here I'm gonna click on the second image and I'm gonna hold the mouse button down then drag it down all the way 
go to the elements icon do not drop it here drag it up and then on the screen right here let go of it if you're using CS5 drag it up all the way to the top of this line and drag it on this line otherwise it's going to open up all the images on top of each other so in elements is fine it's just going to open it up here at the top and you can see on this section right here I can jump between the images so what I do with the second screen I'm just going to open them again why I love to use two screens is if I take this explorer over to the second screen then I've got an entire image or entire screen I, I can use just to look at my picture so I can just drag it over and drop drag the image over and drop so if you've got two screens it makes it a lot more easier to get this done now the first tool that we're going to cover and we're only going to cover this one tool today and in future episodes we are going to look at more um, the tool is called levels now don't get confused between levels that you can see there compared to layers that you've got here layers are when you add layers on top of a image and you do adjustments to that layers or you have maybe multiple images on top of each other then every image will be on its own layer and a layer you can almost think of like a piece of paper so a bunch of papers on top of each other it'll be the same it's just layers stacked on top of each other now the tool that we're going to use is called levels and it's an amazing tool um, a lot of the time I'll open an image and that's the only thing I'm going to be doing to that image because the image is actually perfect there's nothing wrong of it but I'm going to use levels on it just to enhance the contrast or the color a little bit now the long route to get there if you really want to use it will be to go to enhance then adjust lighting and you can see levels right here but there's a shortcut control and L so if you press control and L on your keyboard you're going to see the levels dialog screen opening up now very important you can adjust stuff on this um, dialog that will completely mess up the picture so do not change the output levels here also do not use these pointers don't use auto because that it mostly just gives you a result that you don't want because we are going to use the histogram right here to fine tune it exactly the way we want to see it. Then you can see at the top here channel RGB. So at, when we're adjusting this histogram, we will be doing it on the red, the green, and the blue channel all together. So do not use this drop down and change the colors here. You will find very weird results on your images. And I cover that in other videos I've actually done previous to this that is on my um, online store. But um, do not change this for now because the colors will look very weird until I actually explain it to you in a later video why you would change this. So for now, the only thing that we are going to be using is this histogram right here. And you might notice this. Uh, you might have seen this on the back of the screen on your camera. Then we've got a preview button here, which is a very nice way of just looking at your before and your after. Now, before I start to edit it, I'm going to sh or edit this image. I'm going to just cancel this image. I don't want to start to work on it, but just look at the way this histogram looks. Then I'm going to go cancel. I'm going to go to the other image right here. I'm going to press Control and L again, and then you'll notice this histogram looks completely different. So now you know that every image, the tones and the, the, the image, the way the image is taken looks different compared to the previous image. So there's no wonder cure that you can just use the same settings on every image. You will have to adjust the image the way you want to see it. I'm going to go cancel, go back to the previous image, and then control L. Now you'll see on this histogram there is a black point. This is the shadow areas of your image. So if I drag this point, you'll see the image will become darker. Then there is a white point here. This controls your highlights in the image. Be very careful of this point. If you drag it too far, you'll notice the image will just completely blow out. And then in the middle, you've got your midtones. And you'll see if I drag it this way, the image goes darker. If I drag it this way, the image will just wash out again. So we've also got here a reset button. If you've played around with this and you don't like it, just go to reset. And it takes it back to the image the way it was. Now for you to learn to properly use this tool, just open like 10 or 20 pictures and just on every image, just play around with the sliders. That's the only way you will learn. Now if I look at this image, this is a sunset, but the colors are washed out. So it's telling me this image is overexposed. Now if you look at this section right here, this is where the shadow areas of this image should be, the darker parts of the image. But it's completely flat. There's no information here. So if we take this black point and we just cut that section out and we take it to all the way to there, just look at that huge improvement. 
just by dragging one simple slider on the levels tool. Now to see the before and after because your, your eyes quickly adjust to what you're seeing there's a preview here. So if I click on it there's the before there's the after. And I love to use this just to see the before and the after of my image. I'm just going to take this bar away here. Then if I use the black point and I take it back further you'll see I can make the image even darker. Now I don't really need to use the white point in this image it's unnecessary. I can still use the middle point I can make the image the mid, mid tones rather brighter or I can make them darker as well. I'm going to make them a little lighter and then make the black point even darker. Just look at that. Here's our before and here's our after. Now you can just ask yourself which one do you really want to print? This one or this one? And I'm sure your answer will be this image. Okay now when I'm done with this I'm just going to go to OK here and that image is done. Now a few minutes ago I told you about the navigator here and I forgot to show you what it does. Now, if you look at the navigator here you'll see it's got a red square around the image here. Now this is telling me that everything that's in the red square here is what I am seeing here. Then it's got a zoom line here that's got a minus and a plus. So if I click on this pointer, I just drag it up and down, I can zoom in and out of this image. Now there are shortcuts to do this but then you have to use like for instance the control and the minus to zoom out and the control and plus to zoom in. Then I have to comp have, then I have to take my hand away from the mouse which I don't want to do because it's just quicker just move here and just drag the line. If you want to move the the um, image around here you can just put this little white hand here on top of this red block and just move it around. So if I want to go to that point right there which is now here I can just zoom in take the navigator and go there and there's that point right there. Zoom in and out very quickly. So I love to use the navigator. It saves me a ton of time. Okay so let's go to the second image. Press Control and L once again. Now this image if you look at it you can see the colors are very dull so it's telling you this image is underexposed. You can see it's very dark in, in the background as well. It just doesn't look that great. So let's look at what we can do with this image. Now this image is just reversed around. So on the, on the previous one, the flat section was on, in this region, where on this one, the flat section is on this region. There's no information here. So if I take the slide, I just drag it all the way to there, you'll see the image will become much lighter. Now I need to be very careful with the white point. If I take this too far, you're going to blow the highlights. So if you look in this section right here, if I keep dragging it, I'm just going to blow the detail out. And this looks terrible. So always be very careful with the white point. But if I just take this, this selection right here and I preview it, just look at that big difference. Just by using just this one slider. Now I can take the black point here and I can drag it back like this, make the image a little darker. And then take the midtones, push it up a little bit. If you look in the before and after, just look at that. There's the before and there's the after. It makes a big difference. Okay so once you're done with this and you're happy just go to OK and your image is done. Now when you want to save your image this is very very important. Don't go file and just save because the moment you do that you're saving over your image. Now with JPEGs and that's the file format your camera is saving as well. With a JPEG if you open the file you edit it and you save it. You then close the image at a later stage open it again, you do some editing to it, save it again, close it and repeat the process. If you continuously do that you will start to damage the picture. In the end you'll see the image will be very pixelated, it will become very very terrible. So always go to save as. Do not save over your original image. Always use save as. A very nice way of doing this is to actually in the folder that you've got all your pictures create a new folder and just make it edits or just give it a name that you want to to uh, give it that folder but make sure you put all your saved files in that folder otherwise you might just save over something or if you put a letter behind it a lot of people love to just put a letter behind it. so they'll go um, save as and then they will 
just do this. I'll just put an A right next to it. Now, if you've got five or six or 700 files in that folder, and there's four or five images that you've edited, and you need to go look for all the, the images just to find that A or B or C next to it, it's, it's not nice. So just right click here and go new and create a folder and call it edits. It's very simple. Then you know all the pictures that you that you've now worked on will be saved in this folder. Otherwise you want to show someone your nice pictures and then while you have to look for the A's and the B's and the C's you show them the bloopers as well. So now in this folder I'm just going to take this A away here because we don't need it. If I want to save this image now in this folder I'm just going to press the save button right here and I'm going to get this JPEG options screen. Now here you'll see it showing your preview of the size as well and then a quality slider. Now these options you can leave alone, you don't need to change anything there. Just the important part here is the file size. Don't save the image like this trying to get the size smaller because look at the quality of it. The image is now in low quality. The image that we're working on now is a, is a high-res image. It's, a, it's an image straight from the camera. So this you would want to save high quality like this. Now you'll notice 12 is high quality, 11 is still high quality, 10 is high quality, but the moment you go to 9 you reach high, or actually it's maximum quality not high quality. When you reach 9 you you start to go to high quality and then to medium quality and then low quality. So it's always best to save the highest quality file you can here. In a future episode we will look at resizing so that you can resize the image to send it to someone via email or if you want to upload it to Facebook and you've got limited bandwidth I'll show you how to do that as well. But for now you can just do this, save it the highest quality and just press, oh, just choose OK there. Now if I go here to my Explorer. I'm just going to drag my Explorer over again. And you look, you'll see here there's the Levels 3 and the 2 file. And here's the Edits folder. So if I go to the Edits folder, here I've got the image that I saved. And here I've got the original. So I've got a copy of each. So that's the better way to save your files so that you know you're not saving over your originals. Okay, so that's that for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please subscribe. And then I'll see you in next week's episode when we look at using white balance on the camera. So, bye.